All right. Uh, hello, I'm Colin from Octopus. Uh, flew in from New Zealand earlier this week, and I'd love to talk to you a little bit about deploying to the edge and uh, some of the things that we've noticed and some of the things we do. Um, so when I first started in tech, the edge was a server and a data center. Um, and then it became a server uh, stored in various other places. Um, I'm sure a few of you might recognize this server. Um, and then it became servers in, in uh, retail locations and handhelds that people carried around as mobile became uh, not so hideously expensive. Um, we've seen deployments move to vending machines in all kinds of wonderful places and into now embedded devices and systems uh, with one of our customers that does uh, healthcare uh, devices. We also have a really cool customer, Climavision, who's deploying to radars, uh, tracking weather all throughout the uh, southeastern uh, United States, which is pretty cool. You should check them out. They're hiring. We love them. Um, but what I really love about where we've gotten to in deploying to the edge is I've got this common hosting platform, Kubernetes, that allows me to take some of the practices that I'm used to deploying to in data center in the cloud and shrink that down to really small devices. One of the big pizza chains here in the US, for example, we deploy to a small little Kubernetes cluster. It's no bigger than a little NUC PC in every store. Um, and I think that's really, really cool. But Kubernetes doesn't solve all the problems with deploying to the edge. There's some existential problems that you heard about earlier today around things like cruise ships and, and uh, transport ships um, that have always existed in deploying to the edge. And in fact, as you deploy to more things and more places in places that you don't have the same level of control, you're dealing with things like, is it in the current state? You can never guarantee that everything is N minus one. In fact, you might just you know, get an old device that comes online like a POS terminal at a hotel and it hasn't been online for six months and you've got to figure out how do I deploy and bring it up to the state that I expect. You've got configuration changes. We're seeing this a lot with customers deploying ge uh, geography wise that they've got things that they need to apply, let's say in Europe versus North America. Um, and some of that's at a configuration level. Um, we've also seen others that deal with availability, bandwidth, and latency. None of these problems are unique to Kubernetes. And we've got decades of experience um, uh, figuring this out as an industry as well as uh, at Octopus. But one of the things that's really, I think, interesting here is when it comes to deploying to the edge, um, one of the things that we spend a lot of time understanding from customers is how they handle failure, because failure is actually a feature when you're deploying to the edge. And of course, we, you know, it, it not only does it create potentially business downtime, but as we saw recently, there's a lot of people that physically had to go out to devices to actually restore the, the, the system from bare metal up. And so when you're planning your deployments to the edge, you've actually got to practice and expect that failure will happen. It's not a book that you dust off from time to time. And of course, failure sometimes doesn't always show itself in terms of a complete failure. Sometimes it's actually the feature is, the, fit, the deployment worked, but the product is doing something really weird, like getting stuck in a parking lot and honking at each other. And so you need to plan for failure. You need to figure out how to verify and how to recover. And one of the neat things that we're seeing is actually two emerging challenges in deploying to the edge. One is that target self-registration, where we actually can't know how many things we're deploying to. That number is going to change every time because somebody goes to the store, unwraps a device, bing, it turns on, and now I've got more devices the next time I deploy. We're also dealing with um, a problem set, and I'd love to know if you've got this problem, because I'd love to talk to you about this. I work in R&D, I'm not in sales. Uh, but deployments that are never done, you never reach that final state. And so I think there's things we have to learn from mobile network operators, people who've done desktop management, um, who've dealt in this concept of fleet management, where nothing is ever completely in a singular state. And so I'd love to talk to you if you've got uh, deployment challenges uh, like this. Very quickly, Octopus Deploy, we do complex deployments. We've been around for 10 years. We're 300 of us. We're based, uh, we, we came out of Australia, uh, but we're uh, uh, heavily based around the world. Um, we've acquired uh, CodeFresh, which is why we're here at uh, KubeCon, because only have we been doing Kubernetes deployments, uh, but we're now one of the main maintainers in uh, Argo. We do CD at any scale. We deal with this edge multi-tenant deployment problem really, really well. It's first class, and we'd love to help you. I'm at my time. Thank you so much, team.